Hey folks, Good Guy Glenn here, and today is Tuesday, May 14th, 2024, and I am in Middletown, Maryland. I'm here at my buddy's house, Corporal Chaffee. He came and got me at the terminal the other day up in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania and took me back to his house so I could decompress for a while before I head back to Jersey. And um, yeah, I've been here just sleeping in a real bed, uh, eating real food, and just trying to like come to grips with everything that has been going on. I don't know, I wanted to do this video just so y'all know how I'm doing. Uh, there's so much I want to say, and I'm gonna do it in um, I'm gonna do it in another video. But I just wanted to have some time to decompress before I start making videos about the whole experience and whatnot. And uh, so yeah, today I walked up into town. I got a cup of coffee. Town is very nice. This area is very nice. It's uh, right near the border of West Virginia, in the mountains. A lot of civil, a lot of civil war stuff around here. And um, yeah, it's it's been good. It's been a good couple of days. I go back to Jersey on Thursday. Um, I called a mechanic in Jersey, and my Jeep has been towed over there, so he's fixing it. So I'll have a ride to go back and forth to my new job that I have lined up. I've got a place to stay, I've got things lined up, and I've gotta tell you, everything has been good. Everything has been really good. Um, I've got a little bit of PTSD for working from working at Western Express. Um, but all in all, it really isn't going to affect the rest of my life. So it really doesn't matter. It's just something I did. And now I've got things lined up. And God really is good. And if you keep your faith and you do what you're supposed to do and you keep praying on like what to do, you'll find your way. And I know like a lot of people don't believe in that, but it's honestly true. And your mindset has a lot to do with it. If you know that this is all just a test, that this is all just temporary. You can make it through those hard times. Like it's, um, it hasn't been, it hasn't been easy. It, six months at Western Express is not easy. It's not easy. You know, it's weird. I really, I would have done a year at Western Express. I would have done a year. I wanted to do a year OTR. I had it in my head. I could do a year or two years OTR. And it just didn't wind up happening, man. It just didn't wind up happening for whatever reason. I I thank Western Express for giving me an opportunity. I'd like to tell you, you know, one thing you have to keep in mind about Western Express is they're a starter company. You're going to have opportunities at Western Express. You're not going to have at another company. You're going to have opportunities to make mistakes, and they're just going to keep you running. They're not going to even care about the mistakes you make. Whereas if you go to um, Swift, if you go to Warner, these mistakes might cost you your job. And not so much at Western like it is at other places. So keep that in mind when you're at Western Express. You have to, there's a give and take there. Um, so... That's just a positive note. I want to also thank everyone who uh, reached out to me on Facebook who told me that their videos kept them going at Western Ex My videos kept them going at um, Western Express. Like, I didn't... I'm just an idiot who wanted to document, like, what I was doing at Western Express and, like, my journey because I've been through a lot the last year. I've been through a real lot and I just wanted to document my journey and a lot of you like are interested in that journey and a lot of you have drawn from what I said and like the videos I made and 
I didn't think so. Like I knew like my my subscribers, I know my amount of subs went through the roof, especially when I started doing stuff with Wildbeard. Big shout out to uh, Josiah, great guy. Check out his channel, you know, um, Wildbeard Trucking. Awesome, awesome guy, great YouTuber, awesome father. Not, can't say enough about him. Um, but I never really expected a lot of Western drivers to watch my videos and care. Because, you know, my experience is a lot different than a lot of people's experience at Western. I gotta be 100% honest with you, except for a few weeks where I wasn't making any money with the company, and I had some breakdowns mixed in with that, but there was like some time, it just seems to have related around that Francis Key Bridge incident. For those weeks after that incident, I wasn't making a lot of miles, and then my miles went back up to like about 2,500 a week average. So I was making good miles at Western. I was making decent money. I came in last year, so I was still getting raises. So I was making about 48 cents a mile. So I was making about $1,200 a week at Western Express. So that wasn't consistent. Mind you, there were $700 weeks. I had $300 weeks, you know, but the miles weren't always a big thing to me. Like I was making miles. It was weird. Like I know people sit and I just wasn't one of them. And maybe that's because I ran, you know, I would get up at three o'clock in the morning and run all day. But on the flip side of that, I'm very particular about how I run my clock. I'm an older dude. I know I safety matters to me. Having a safe place to stay at night matters to me. So I would run my clock from zero three in the morning till 1600 in the afternoon and when they threw curveballs at me like late pickups or late deliveries live unloads um i wasn't a big fan of that but i had help from other drivers who told taught me secret tricks of where i could stay safely and um you know i give them shout outs in the videos that are coming out I got some stuff in the can, so when you start seeing videos pop up of me driving, that's from before I left. And I just want to release those videos and whatnot. So I'll start editing them after I finish this one. I just wanted to give you all a big, uh, like, you know, an update. I, I, I trimmed up my beard a little bit because I'm trying to look like a normal human being again. I'm not out on the road anymore, so I can't look like a wild man. Um, I'm thinking about shaving my head, like I had said. We'll see. I got already got a job lined up, so it's not like I'm going on interviews or anything. But I just want everyone to know who's still at Western, just do your best. Like right now is the ticket blitz. Kind of glad, and I think everything worked out like in a way where I could go leave before this blitz because my truck wouldn't pass the level one. It just wouldn't, it had issues. Um, I didn't have paperwork on the truck, the proper paperwork I should have had on the truck. There was just like a, a lot of things. And I noticed the last couple times I ran, I was running heavy trailers that were overweight. And you know, I didn't want to make videos at the time about it, but um, they were overweight. There was no way to fix the tandems there's no sliding the fifth wheel to make it work. They were just overweighing. They were just overloading the trucks. And I talked to an owner op who told me that this has been a trend for a while now that these companies are doing that. They want to save on freight so they're shipping more and heavier loads. You know, they're shipping out. Whatever, dude. I don't know. That's in the past now. I'll be quite honest with you. I don't think I will ever go back to hauling commerce um i think from this point forward i will continue to just use my license uh for specialized trucking which i'm currently doing um you know but the, the days of picking up trailers dry van and hauling baby formula and paper and uh stuff to walmart and home depot those those days are probably over for me which is another thing that you have to think about when you leave Western Express, you know, 
if they're gonna do if they're gonna pull shenanigans and you're gonna go to like another OTR company, those shenanigans could maybe hurt you. But when you're going to um, a mom and pop, so they want to call it. I mean, I wouldn't call the company I'm going to a mom and pop. I would call it a um, you know a local smaller outfit, and um, it doesn't matter. They know me. They followed my adventure here on social media. I'm not telling you all to go out and become social media people. I'm not telling you to all start your YouTube channel. But if you want to document your life on YouTube, go ahead. Like, you know, there's something that's a little bit cathartic about it. Um, but there's also a lot of like, you know, you're giving up some of your privacy. But my life is like an open book, dude. There's some things I haven't told you all, you know, I, I keep some stuff very close to the vest. And that's because some of the things that are go that go on in my life involve other people in my family. And I don't want to air out their business. That's not my place. Like, you know what? I could tell you what's going on with me. But when it starts getting into there's other people involved who I don't have their permission to like tell their story, how it affects me. I'm gonna be respectful of that. I don't want to. I don't want to do that. So, yeah. Sometimes it works out for you. Sometimes you put your uh, business out there on YouTube and you start getting offered jobs, and uh, that's cool. Bit nervous because anytime you start something new. You just want to do, like, whenever someone offers you an opportunity, I get nervous that I'm going to let them down. And that's just the thing. And that's from, like, a lot of, like, what's been going on with me lately. I used to never be like that. I used to be the guy who always was like, well, I'll give anything a try because I can do anything, you know? I'm uh, a lot more gun-shy about that, let's just say. Now, I just want to do a good job, you know what I mean? I just want to, like... When someone offers me an opportunity, I just don't want to let them down. It's going to be nice to be able to see my kids all the time. It's going to be nice to, uh, yeah, man, this is going to be a lot of great stuff. And we're going to make a lot of videos and uh, talk about a lot of stuff. But keep up the good fight. All of you who are out here, all of you people who are either new to the trucking business or, you know, you're you're thugging it out, doing OTR, working for a mega carrier. Just run your clock right. Do your pre-trip. Be safe out there. You know, that's what you have to do. Protect your license. That's ultimately the big lesson that I've learned from being out here. Don't let any mega carrier make you jeopardize your license. If you're an owner op and you want to take risks, that's on you because it profits only you. It benefits only you. But don't take risks for a mega carrier who doesn't care about you, won't have your back, and will definitely let you hang. You know, they'll hang you out to dry even though you did them a favor. And, uh, you know, don't do that. So stay motivated, stay positive, say your prayers, you know what I mean? And everything is going to be all right. I got some videos coming out. I got some stuff in the can. I'm going to leave after I do this video and get this video up. I'm going to start editing some of the long format stuff that's on the GoPros. And um, yeah, just trying not to eat potato chips. That's what I'm trying to do. It's raining luckily, so I can't walk back into town. Um, but keep the faith, right? Love your family, say your prayers. You know, you're not, I'm going to tell you right now, and it's 100% true. You don't always get what you want, but you definitely will get what you need. If you pray hard enough, you're going to end up where you need to be folks. So drink plenty of water. Take your vitamins, eat a Greek yogurt and a banana every single day. Continue to do your pre-trip. And if you like this video, smash that like button. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so when I drop another video, you get a notification. 
once again, this is Good Guy Glenn. Thanks for watching.